Okay, so the first trend that I want to talk about is atomic radius. Um, this paper here is a, a typed uh, folded notes that I like to do for my students, so I have it zoomed way the heck in, so hopefully you can read this at home. Uh, if not, make sure to post something uh, down in the comments down below so that I can fix it. Uh, anyway, atomic radius. Atomic radius is just what it sounds like, the radius of the atom, distance from the center of the nucleus all the way to the outermost electron ring. So, nucleus, outer ring, radius. Not that hard. The trend for atomic radius, in general, there's always exceptions to every rule, particularly in chemistry, but in general, as we go across the period, across the row, our radius decreases. Why? My students are so tired of hearing me say that. The reason for that, remember we said in the last video that any time I go across the period, my reason for anything is bigger magnet, more protons. So, same thing here. Scooch that over so you can read it. There we go. The number of protons increases with no new rings being added. My stronger magnet can pull my electrons in closer. So even though there might be more electrons, there's still not any further distance. Uh, for example, if we look at something like sodium and sulfur here. If we look at sodium on the periodic table, the periodic table tells me that he has 11 protons in his nucleus. Yeah. And he has three rings. One, two, three. Uh, this is called a Bohr diagram, incidentally. Hopefully, I will have a video up on these soon, if I haven't done that already. Two electrons on the first ring, two electrons in the S on the second ring, six in the P, and then one on this outermost ring. Sodium, or excuse me, uh, sulfur has a similar arrangement, except he has 16 protons in the middle. So what that means, he still only has three rings. Both of these elements are on the same row on the periodic table. There's sodium, there's sulfur, same row. The only difference is that one is farther along than the other. So that means that my sulfur is in fact able to pull all of his rings, all of his electrons in even tighter. Because I have an 11 proton magnet, versus a 16 proton magnet. Much stronger magnet, same distance that he has to go. So sulfur has a smaller radius than sodium. Going back to our trend here right quick. As we go down a group, my radius increases. And if you remember again from our last video, we said that every time we talk about going down a family, down a group, our key phrase is more rings, and that is exactly the case here. Each row adds a new ring. Example for this one is sodium versus, ah, eh, fluorine's a bad example. Let's do sodium and rubidium. I don't want to do fluorine. That's a hard one. So, sodium, rubidium, same family. Sodium has an 11 proton magnet. I should do this in a different color because these are going to overlap, for which I apologize. An 11 proton magnet in sodium. Three rings on my sodium. Oh, you goofball. I guess I could have just referenced that one. Oh, well. Rubidium, on the other hand, has five rings. He's on the fifth row. So five rings in my rubidium. So yes, he has a 37 proton magnet, which is much stronger. But if he didn't have that stronger magnet, he wouldn't be able to hold on to the electrons that he has. Two, three, four, five. So just 
by looking, you can already tell that rubidium has a considerably larger radius than sodium. Why? He has more rings. So that is the trend for atomic radius. The next trend on my list that I want to talk about is ionic radius, this guy here. So the trend for ionic radius should look pretty stinking familiar. So ionic radius, distance from the center of an atom to the outermost ring. This isn't an atom, this is an ion, but it is very similar to the trend for atomic radius. As we go across the period, radius decreases. Hey, look at there. Same thing happens. Why? Because, as per usual, as we go across the period, I am getting a bigger magnet. Bigger magnet, better pull. Smaller atom, smaller ion. Down a group, my radius increases. Why? Because I'm adding rings, just like our atomic radius. The only point that I need to make in this section is that if you're talking about this trend here, ionic radius, you're comparing ion to ion. In my examples over here, notice I'm comparing sodium ion to sulfur ion, sodium ion to fluoride ion, sodium ion to rubidium ion, whatever the case may be, but you have to be comparing ion to ion. Similarly, if you're talking about atomic radius, just like our example over here, I was comparing atom to atom. There are no ions involved. If you start involving ions, all bets are off. And here's why. So ion size versus atom size. When we talk about ions, okay, positive ions, also known as cations, are losing electrons. So typically when they lose electrons, they're losing a ring, an entire ring, which right off the bat makes them smaller. Not only that, but less electrons means less repulsion between the remaining electrons, which allows my atom to pull them in closer. So for this one, I'm just going to go to the paper. Way easier. So let's do sodium since he seems to be my favorite today. And his ion. So sodium ion, or excuse me, sodium has an 11 proton nucleus and three rings. One first ring has two electrons. Second ring has two electrons in the S, six electrons in the P. And my third and final electron, or ring, excuse me, has one electron. Yes, I know my circles are beautiful and even aren't you in awe. So sodium plus, sodium plus one means that this electron right here has gone off to play elsewhere. He is gone. I'm still talking about sodium, so I still have my 11 proton nucleus. That cannot change. Thou shalt not mess with uh, the protons. So since sodium lost that outermost electron, that means there is nothing of interest on that ring. That means it's not there anymore. It just kind of ceases to exist. So right off the bat, notice the difference in size between sodium and sodium ion. Sodium ion is smaller. In fact, it's probably even smaller than I've drawn it here. Because here I have a balance between protons and electrons. Same number. Here I have more protons than I have electrons. Less electrons means that they're repelling against each other, much less. Less electrons, less repulsion. Also. Strong nucleus, able to pull them in tighter. So my positive ions are smaller than their atom counterparts. Negative ions, also known as anions, are gaining electrons. So we're gaining electrostatic repulsion to make a larger ion. If we were to talk about chlorine, for example. Chlorine and his ion. Chlorine has a 17 proton nucleus and three rings. So let's see, I have two electrons on the first ring, two in the S, six in the P on the second ring, and seven, let's see, two electrons in the S and five in the P on that third ring. For my ion, green this time. I still have a 17 proton nucleus. That has not changed, but bah! Screensaver, not fair. 
I still have a 17 proton nucleus. I still only have three rings. That much has not changed. But I'm adding an additional electron to this outermost ring, where once there was seven, now there are eight electrons on that outermost ring means there are more electrons, more negativeness to repel against each other. So my atom is actually going to get larger. They're going to push away from each other more. So this one isn't quite as easy to draw, perhaps, as the positive ion, because I haven't lost or gained any rings. I've just got more negatives more electrons to push against each other, extra ex electrostatic repulsion. So they push out and my negative ion is much bigger than my atomic counterpart. So be careful when you're talking about trends. Compare atom to atom or ion to ion for the trends across the periodic table. If you're comparing atom to ion, you need to draw the pictures and look at them individually. On my next video, hopefully, we'll get through ionization energy and electronegativity. See you then.